So uh, I would need an adapter. Mini, yeah, this, yeah, mini to Mac, oh, do you have it? Mini to VGA. Mini to VGA is fine. All right. So just before I you know, is the time to come back, so just for the end, I'll, I'll just come here and be quiet. I'll just show you my phone. Oh, Uh, all right. So good morning. Um, so we're here to introduce a project that we've been working on um, for for the past year. Uh, my name is Mike. This is uh, my colleague Rise, um, and uh, we are part of a team at um, Harvard Medical School um, that's currently developing a new animation software for biologists. Um, so here are the people I work with. Um, on the team, there are two programmers. That will be me and Rise over there, and we have a um, sort of special advisor, Ron Ron Amaral, who is um, sort of in charge of just sort of giving us ideas and feedbacks. And the project is led by Janet, who is our um, principal investigator, and along with two co-PI, Scale and Peter. So the animation software we are creating is called Molecular Flipbook. Um, it's designed to, um, for researchers to, to visualize um, and animate molecules. So to accomplish this, we ended up using the Blender game engine to, um, uh, for, for, for the project. So the goal of this talk is to um, introduce you to the software and um, go over some of the technical implementation details that, um, that, 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 uh, that came up. So Molecular Flipbook is a 3D animation software that allows users to um, basically manipulate objects in 3D environment, um, just like you know, Blender or, or Maya. So you have a sort of 3D space that you can import models in. Um, and you can move them around, animate them. Um, just like Maya Blender. Um, but it's, what's different is it's specifically designed to visualize uh, molecules. So um, you're not really dealing with any arbitrary data type, not, not you know, um, any model, but uh, specifically uh, molecules, which, you know, this is an example of a um, virus, um, the SV40. So you can see this is the type of um, data you're dealing with. Um, the animation software we're creating is um, done using the Blender game engine, and we all know what that is. Um, and it's different because we're not using it in a traditional sense where you're making a game where you know stuff blows up, but um, it's more like a, a scientific, um, it, it, it's a visualization tool. So, um, and you'll see how we are using the game engine to, to accomplish this. Um, just to give you some idea, here are some of the um, work people, ha uh, people have done um, uh, using other softwares. This one is done by actually someone on our own team, um, Campbell Strong and Gail, um, using a, um, a plugin for Maya. So it's called Molecular Maya, and it's sort of, it's sort of um, 
as an add-on for, for Maya that extends the functionality of their software. Um, the next one is done by um, actually Monica's group right there um, in uh, Pisa, Italy. So, um, and they're using a software called um, BioBlender, which um, is essentially a uh, extension of um, Blender that um, allows um, researchers to work with proteins. Um, so, as you can see, you know, a lot of this has been sort of done before, um, and, and I mean, a lot of, I mean, in fact, um, both of these projects are still ongoing. Um, so, you know, we, we're doing something slightly different, and you'll see why in a bit. Um, so here are some animations as well. Um, so, you know, we're not limited to just um, stills. Um, this one, you can see that from a video, you can sort of vi uh, visualize the mechanics of how um, one protein might interact with another. Um, this one, again, same thing. Um, you sort of see um, proteins, I think, going into um, like a lipid to bilipid layer. Um, and this one is done by one of our own as well, um, using, I think, I believe, Maya. Um, so what, what's our goal? Um, since we have you know, all, all the other um, software out there, what are we doing differently? Um, first of all, we uh, want researchers to um, use our software to sort of create their own hypothesis. So what I mean by this is uh, we want our software to not only be used to sort of create images and animations um, as sort of an afterthought. Um, we design software so that we want researchers to use the software to act uh, to form new ideas. Um, a lot of the cell, bi uh, cell biology hypotheses um, have to do with really simple molecular movement. So uh, how to proteins to objects. Um, they um, it deals with how they come together, how they sort of bind to each other. Um, so we want people to be able to sort of do that and sort of just, you know, come up with um, new ideas. Um, and to do that, you know, um, most of the researcher, it's, it's, it's typically, uh, typically based on other people's work. You rarely work alone. So um, we felt it's important to have to build a platform where people can modify um, other people's um, to to have access to other people's work um, and and to sort of modify on top of them. Um, it also must be really flexible to use, and of course, the reason for this is um, we're dealing with. Um, people who, molecular um, biologists, biologists who really have no background in 3D. So, and you know, it, they're not people who haven't used Blender, they're people who wouldn't know what keyframe is, you know, they, they, they wouldn't know what RGB stand for. And so to, to build a software like that for them where they don't really have the time to, 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 to you know, learn all of that, you want to make the software as simple for them as possible. And luckily, we can um, accomplish all of this um, while staying sort of specific to one field. So that does narrow down the scope a bit. We don't have to build a software that can, you know, animate for films and animate for different sort of um, um, effect, visual effects. It's only for a specific uh, purpose. So um, to accomplish this, we sort of divided the project into two parts. There is a software component. Uh, we are, we're also calling it the toolkit. So the software component um, allow researchers to create animations, um, and there's also a, we uh, a website component which will allow the work um, to be shared and viewed by others. Um, so, sort of, um, for the software component, um, the rest of this talk will be about. Um, the development, how we implemented the UI, and, and some of the, the technical stuff that um, um, the technical problems we ran into. Uh, for the website, uh, we, we, we haven't really started working on that yet. It's, it's uh, phase two of the project. So, um, but Risi will give you an overview uh, today just to sort of give you an idea of how we um, imagine the website to be. Um, before we go any further, I want to give you a demo of our software. This is going to be a bit hard since you can't see the screen. All right, let's see if this works. 
Mm, okay. So um, what we have here is basically our UI. It's a bit actually. I wonder if we can change the resolution real quick. Hmm. How did it fell? Will this screw anything up? Hmm. Nope, it's gone. Okay. Okay, you know what? Sorry. Okay, I have to let me go back to Okay, well I can show you like this. But it's just a bit small. Um Okay, so this is our software it's sort of running inside the Blender game engine. Um, so how this works is essentially it's, it's think of it as a, as a 3D software. Um, what we can do is we can import a molecule, a protein, um, and of course so this is, um, we see we'll cover this in a bit more detail. Um, so, but essentially how, how this works is the, the, the protein is often stored on this database um, um, and they're referred to by a four digit um, ID. So in this case, I'm loading a protein um, called 2PTC. Um, so if I press enter, it's gonna actually go, uh, go off on the internet, find this protein off the database and get the um, protein back. So now that it's ready, I can just click load and it will import the protein into the into the viewport. So, and what we can do at this point is, um, of course, you can sort of um, rotate around it. You can like sort of look at different stuff. Um, if you zoom out, zoom out a bit, um, what we can also do is um, animate, which is really one of the main goal of the software. So, if we go here, click on it. Actually, what I can do is, yeah, okay, I'll do this. Um, so what's at the bottom here are the, essentially, you can think of them as keyframe, but they are represented as um, almost like PowerPoint slides. So if I add another keyframe here, I can drag this out. Actually, no, let me, sorry, let me go back to the first one. Click on it. I want to drag it out. And then this one also I want to just drag this way. And then for the second keyframe, I want them to come back. So let's say we do this. Um, and then let's just, for the sake of this, for the third one, um, let's actually, let's move. Actually, it's OK. Oh. Move these down like that. So now that we have three slides, we've set up the animation. Um, what you can do is if you press play, you can see that it comes together and it does that motion, um, which is, of course, not scientifically, it doesn't mean anything at this point. But um, essentially, you can create any sort of simple animation um, by just doing what I just did. Um, and I mean, one of the main difference here, as you'll notice, that um, the interface doesn't really follow any of the convention of um, sort of popular 3D software, but it's more sort of a um, mix of different elements that we felt we felt is is easy for people to understand. Um, and we'll get into, uh, uh, we'll get a bit more into the UI detail in a bit. So before I continue, um, I'm going to invite uh, Risa up to sort of talk a bit more about um, the website that we're planning to build to give you a better idea of how the website integrates with the with the software that we're building. So. Good morning. My name is Risa Rio. As Mike mentioned, I'm a junior program on, on the Molecular Flipbook team. I'm new to Blender and the Blender community, and I'm very excited to be here. So many thanks to the PIs, Janet, Gill, and Peter, NSF, and the organizers of the Blender Conference 2012. <clears throat> this month, I just started to dive into the second phase of the molecular uh, 
flipbook project, which consists of a database-driven website. So why build a website? Well, first of all, it's important to keep in mind that whenever a uh, new article is published, the research is pushed forward incrementally. That means new information, new knowledge is based on incremental change, which can be slow. The RCSB Protein Data Bank is an amazing site where um, biologists can go down, download the structural information of a molecule in the format of a PDB file, and you see one here. It's basically a data set that is used to create a model or mesh of a protein. New PDBs of the same or related proteins can be posted at the RCSB Protein Databank site, <clears throat> but only after the research is published. <clears throat> the second reason for building a website is that in addition to the steep learning curve for a 3D app that Mike mentioned earlier, among the biology community, much effort and many, many hours are spent creating just one scene file based on existing research. Many of the animations are hypothetical, which means that an animation reflects a visual hypothesis for a scientist. With these two points in mind, it is understandable that not many scene files are shared within the biology community. And it's unfortunate because it's very important to receive helpful feedback on these visual hypotheses. Okay, goals of the website. The molecular flipbook website will act as a central hub where researchers can, one, access the 3D molecular toolkit, molecular flipbook, Two, share the, their animated models, and three, are encouraged to interact and collaborate with other users, other scientists in the molecular flipbook community. Key features. Some of the website's key features are free and open access to the 3D molecular toolkit, molecular flipbook, online documentation and tutorials, a searchable database of animation, scene files of various formats, and a discussion board for users to interact with other users by providing helpful feedback on individual scene files and complete animations. Web technologies. <clears throat> At the back end, we'll be using MySQL running on Apache, and the preferred software framework that we are using is Django. <clears throat> At the front end, we'll be using HTML5 and CSS. <clears throat> so now, allow me to end my part of the presentation with an example of a typical case scenario with the story of Jane. Okay, so first step, Jane the scientist registers as a new user and downloads the 3D app molecular flipbook. <clears throat> Two, Jane has a personalized home page for her account, which includes a topic of interest that she has selected. Next, Jane builds a scene file using Molecular Flipbook. She then uploads her scene file to our website. And then the last step, Jane can annotate her scene files so that these scene files are searchable by other users. <clears throat> Just a reminder, the URL for our website is molecularflipbook.org. We welcome feedback. And here's Mike, and thank you. All right, so um, let's get back to the Blender um, and sort of our software. Um, we started by um, looking at um, some of the other 3D animation software out there um, to decide how what we want to include um, and you know what we want to remove from each of their UIs. So we call it the UI survey, and actually Risa did a lot of the work on that. So um, obviously we looked at Blender and its interface, how um, you know how it's structured, what sort of functionality there is. We looked at um, other popular 3D packages, which shall not be named. We looked at um, Sculptress, which um, I felt like is a very 
Um, it's a very simple sort of um, functional user interface that does one thing and one thing really well, which is, you know, obviously sculpting. Um, and it's sort of, this one, it's interesting because it puts the content um, right smack in the mid, so the whole canvas essentially is content, is 3D, and the UI is um, floating on top of it, right? Um, it's not um, laid out uh, laid out in a grid like format. The UI is sort of only overlaid on top of the on top of the content. Um, so these are the 3D softwares we looked at. We also looked at um, non 3D because uh, we felt like a lot of the user probably have never seen any of these software. So it doesn't really matter to them um, how, how, you know, it, it's not going to be familiar to them. So we obviously looked at um, PowerPoint Keynote, this is the Mac version, uh, which, um, you know, it, this is the, uh, the type of software that almost everyone have, you know, used at some point in their life. So, um, <laughs> you know, we felt like modeling of um, something like this might be more intuitive to people. Uh, we also looked at just music play, uh, music players, you know, QuickTime, YouTube, where there's a uh, play button, a seek bar, and that's also something that almost everyone um, have seen and used before, so they will know how to use something like this. And combining all of that together, um, we came up with something like this. This is essentially what you saw earlier. Um, so some of the key features, obviously, the content, the 3D interface is in the middle of the screen. Um, at the bottom, you have what we are calling the timeline, which is essentially, um, in, in 3D terms, um, you know, a combination of, well, a timeline that um, shows you the different keyframes in the style of different sort of slides, if you will. So here, as you can see, we have four slides, uh, number one, two, three, four, and each of them have an um, interval of um, three seconds. So what that means is if you play back the animation with the play button, um, it's going to just step through them um, one by one, um, and it will automatically interpolate in between whatever motion um, there is. So to the user, it sort of fe uh, feels like an animation, uh, like a PowerPoint software, um, the way you're setting it up. But it's really just doing the same thing that anyone using Blender um, is doing. Um, we also have a um, outliner sort of type of panel on the um, right side, which lists um, the um, the individual proteins and amino acid chain under the um, under the um, for the for 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 a particular molecule for a particular model, so that's something you know the researchers might find useful. Um, and most of our main functionality, the actions, are are um, included on the top left corner. So that's as you can see, that's a very sort of sculptress sculptress like panel with icons, and then you have an option panel at the top. Um, so yeah, we sort of try to borrow from different um, um, yeah different applications. Um, again, just to elaborate on the storyboard, this is typically um, what you know a 3D animation would see if you're animating. You see this curve, or you see a timeline with different keyframes, where um, a lot more people, if you open a textbook, it doesn't even have to be a biology textbook, um, any textbook that um, describes a process, it's usually in the form of a storyboard where you see, um, you know, a, a few different snapshots in time of different slide of 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 a uh, event taking place. So this one, um, you know, most people can you can easily tell that it's sort of you have that green protein over there coming down, um, binding with um, the red one on the left, and sort of you know binding the two together. So I feel like this is, if that's the way people already see textbooks, um, it might um, be good to sort of just elaborate on that and, you know, um, turn it into something like this. This is eventually what we're trying to achieve. So you have the snapshots um, as well as uh, within the slide so that, you know, it will give you um, a glance, a, 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 you know, a, a sort of overview of what your animation looks like. Um, Implementation-wise, we decided to do it in the game engine mainly because we want it to be um, interactive. Um, so we, we, we modeled off another sort of game-like um, application called Foldit. I'm going to gloss over this because I'm running a bit low on time. Um, we use the game engine mainly because, yeah, again, we want the interaction to be more fluid. 
Um, so just real quick, um, it was interesting because we, we ran into some problems. Uh, one of the first one was that there are a lot of sort of scientific code, biology code, that needs to be there for the program to work. And we really didn't have the time to write them. So luckily, because Blender runs off Python, uh, we were able to find a library called EPMV, which um, essentially is a pre-written library for this exact purpose. So someone else has done most of the work. We just um, pretty much implemented the library within our application. So most of the scientific stuff is done with that library. Um, for the user interface within the game engine, uh, we used uh, Mitchell Stokes BGUI as a basis, which is a really cool sort of um, UI interface. So all of the UI elements you saw earlier, the sliders and the different stuff, is all done by, um, um, by Mitchell. And we added some of our own code for checkboxes and other widgets. Um, for the um, BGE, it sort of runs in a tight loop. Um, and essentially, we, um, we wanted to modify it in such a way that when it's not doing anything, um, it wouldn't go, it wouldn't render like crazy, uh, which is pretty much just bad for the CPU. And we felt like it's something that we might want to tackle. Um, so, you know, when it's constantly running, it would keep. Essentially, it would, uh, it would just keep the computer very hot, um, you know, draw the CPU cycles. And um, I was able to modify it with the help of um, the life link to right over there. Actually, he did most of the work. But to lower the, so to, to, to lower the CPU usage in a way that when the game isn't really doing anything active, it will stop the render, it will skip the rendering process. So we felt like that was um, something that was pretty cool that we did. So, I mean, just to sum up the, uh, the talk, um, the, the project is very much still ongoing. We have uh, a full year left before we um, deliver sort of the final product. And yeah, we hope that um, can bring you more updates soon. So yeah, thank you. Any questions? Okay, sure. Sure. Yeah, that would be good. Thanks.